Hey everyone, I'm River, one of the team members here at Dark Arrow, where we're developing the Dark Arrow One, an aircraft engineered for efficient, high-speed, long-range flight. This airplane is powered by an internal combustion engine, but there's been a major trend to electrify vehicles across every industry. So naturally, one of the most common questions we get asked is, will you make an electric version of the Dark Arrow One? In this video, I wanna focus on why it is challenging to electrify high-speed, long-range aircraft like the Dark Arrow One, and also share our approach to achieving improvements in efficiency. Let's get into it. Electric propulsion is appealing for many reasons. Electric motors tend to be lighter, simpler, and quieter than internal combustion engines. They emit no direct CO2 emissions and are physically cleaner to work with. Despite all the benefits of electric propulsion, there's still one key metric that holds it all back from entering the space of high-speed, long-range flight, and that is energy density. When I talk about energy density in this video, I'm primarily going to focus on energy per unit mass as opposed to energy per unit volume. Let's take a look at the current state of the art for battery technology and run some rough numbers to see what it would take for batteries to match the energy contained in the 77 gallon fuel tank of the Dark Arrow One. We'll keep the math simple and we're gonna make several assumptions along the way. A battery that we've been hearing a lot about lately comes from the company Amprius, who has developed a 500 watt hour per kilogram cell claiming it as an industry leader in energy density. For reference, Tesla's best battery cell tops out at just under 300 watt hours per kilogram. These numbers from Amprius and Tesla represent the energy density of an individual cell. After being assembled into a full battery pack with wiring between the cells to support the structure, the weight's gonna increase and the overall energy density of the assembled pack will decrease. For simplicity though, we're just going to assume that this 500 watt hours per kilogram energy density is true even for a fully assembled battery pack. With this number in mind for our battery pack energy density, let's take a look at the energy density of gasoline, which comes in at around 12,700 watt hours per kilogram. Before we get ahead of ourselves and compare these two numbers directly, we need to account for engine efficiency. A gasoline engine like the UL Power 520IS used in the Dark Air One is somewhere around 30% efficient, which means that just under one third of the energy in the gasoline actually gets converted into useful power at the propeller shaft. The rest of the energy is lost in the form of heat, noise, and other waste. With this 30% efficiency in mind, that brings the useful energy density of gasoline down to 3,810 watt hours per kilogram. On the other hand, electric motors tend to be pretty good at converting the stored energy in a battery into useful output, being around 80 to 90% efficient. Although not 100% efficient, we're gonna assume this just to keep the math simple. So now that we have those assumptions out of the way, what weight in batteries would we need to match the energy contained in the 77 gallons of fuel held by the Dark Era One? A gallon of gas weighs around six pounds or 2.7 kilograms, which gives the 77 gallon fuel tank in the Dark Era One a total weight of 210 kilograms or 462 pounds. Multiplying this by the effective energy density that we calculated earlier gives us our total energy contained in the fuel tank of the Dark Era One. And this number comes out to 800,100 watt hours. Dividing this total energy contained in our fuel tank by the assumed energy density of our batteries allows us to calculate the total weight that we would need to equal the energy in a full tank, which comes out to 1,600 kilograms or around 3,500 pounds which is more than twice the gross weight of the Dark Era One. Put another way, 100 pounds of the industry's most energy dense batteries is effectively equal to 13 pounds or two gallons of gas in terms of the energy that these two mediums can deliver to our prop shaft. With our discussion on energy density out of the way, there's a couple other points I wanted to discuss. One advantage of electric motors is that they don't lose power at higher altitudes. A normally aspirated engine, like the standard configuration of the UL520IS, will lose power as the airplane climbs to higher altitudes, since there's less air for the engine to breathe. Less air also means that there's the potential for less drag, and therefore the potential for higher air speeds. That said, there still wouldn't be enough of a speed advantage to make up for the disparity in energy density between batteries and gasoline. One other point I didn't mention is that it is often possible to build electric motors lighter than an equivalent internal combustion engine. The company H3X is developing a 268 horsepower electric motor that weighs only 35 pounds. Swapping this motor out into our airplane would be a weight savings of at least 100 pounds compared to the UL engine. This is definitely something that bodes well for the electric version of the aircraft, but like I said before, 100 pounds of extra batteries on board would be like adding just two extra gallons of fuel in terms of the effective energy that we can deliver to the engine. 
Another solution that's often suggested is using hydrogen fuel cells to store this energy. The energy density per unit mass of hydrogen is far greater than gasoline at 33,000 watt hours per kilogram. Setting aside what would be needed in terms of infrastructure to refuel such an aircraft and the efficiency of converting hydrogen fuel into kinetic energy at the prop shaft, the real limitation for hydrogen appears when you look at its volumetric energy density. On a volumetric basis, liquid hydrogen is just over 2,000 watt hours per liter compared to almost 10,000 watt hours per liter for gasoline. Basically, our 77 gallon fuel tank would only contain about a quarter of the energy if we filled it with liquid hydrogen instead of gasoline. Without this video coming off as if we are completely dismissing electric aircraft, what type of mission would be appropriate for electric aviation today using the latest technology? Even without an energy dense battery breakthrough, there are already several applications where electric aviation works. Pipistrel, for instance, has developed an electric training aircraft. This is a good fit for electric because many training flights are only about an hour long and they remain within a short radius of the flight school. Sonics aircraft offers an electric motor glider. This is another good fit for electric since the motor is mainly used for climbing up to altitude, after which it is shut off so that the airplane can glide. Companies like Aviation and Beta Technologies are developing electric aircraft for short range regional trips between 200 and 300 miles to provide a cleaner, more efficient alternative to regional jet fuel powered aircraft, which tend to be less efficient at covering these types of trips. Long range, high speed missions will remain fueled by combustion technology for quite some time. Tesla even acknowledged this in their latest master plan, where they categorized long range aviation towards the end of their list of industry sectors that will go electric, even listing sustainable aviation fuels as a solution for these types of vehicles. A recurring theme throughout this entire discussion has been the importance of minimizing weight. Reducing the weight of an aircraft is the main variable that can be altered to improve its mission capability. And this is especially true in the case of electric aviation, where you're trying to put as much weight as you can towards batteries without compromising your flight characteristics. Minimizing weight on any airplane is a virtuous cycle. A lighter airplane requires less wing area to achieve flight, which means less drag. Less drag means we can fly at higher speeds without increasing the size of the engine. Keeping the engine small means lower fuel consumption, which results in more range for a given fuel volume. Naturally, there are limits to what can be achieved under this approach, and the Dark Era 1 represents an effort to explore those limits. Incorporating composite structures that are both strong and lightweight is a big piece of how we intend to enable the high-speed, long-range mission of our aircraft. The composite airframe on the Dark Era 1 weighs only about 200 pounds. If you're interested in learning more about our approach and applying the benefits of composite materials to your own projects, we have many other videos on this topic. But we've also taught over 100 students now through our aerospace composites courses, which we've made available both in person and online. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to learn more about how to design and build your own composite parts. Given how critical weight is in aviation, it becomes clear why there is still such a huge uphill battle to electrifying high-speed, long-range aircraft. The point of this video is not to be pessimistic about the challenge of electrifying aviation, but more to discuss the underlying physics that govern the problem. We actually would really love to build an electric airplane, but at the same time, it has to accomplish the high-speed, long-range mission that we're targeting. Since battery technology doesn't yet meet this mission, we had to pursue advancements in lighter materials and more efficient designs to get the maximum efficiency from our combustion-powered aircraft. These advancements can benefit not only combustion-powered aircraft like the Dark Air One, but also electric aircraft in the future. The pursuit of better efficiency and performance is a universal goal that we can all work towards, regardless of the type of aircraft that we fly. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>